Journey family. My name is Sabrine. I'm the Director of Cultural Engagement and I'm just here with our Journey worship leaders and we're just here having a conversation uh, about our responses to this recent sermon series. Um, I'm going to start with Russ who wrote a song recently. Um, Russ, tell us about this song and what inspired it and where you are with it. I was really wrestling with um, the, the thought that, you know, as a, as a white evangelical male Christian that this is a season that, and, and there are many seasons where it's really important for us to just be silent and to listen and to really learn. And and in that, it, it really is going to cause us to hear a lot of things that we, we want to react to, we want to respond to, we want to get defensive, we want to deflect, we want to make excuses. And, and, and really what the scripture calls us to do is to be slow to speak, slow to anger, slow to respond and, and quick to listen. And, uh, and so I really wanted this to be a prayer for myself and anyone who listens. This whole season has been like this, not knowing, okay, when do you use your voice? When do you just be silent and yeah. listen? And yeah. like, it's just been like that tension of the two. And I don't remember all the lyrics of the song, so you're gonna have to forgive me. But there's, there's one line in there that's talking specifically about like this comfort that we feel. And it's talking about like, um, you know, we think we're protecting ourselves, and in doing that, we're, we're we're keeping ourselves safe. But we're actually like we're we're destroying ourselves in this. And so, like, I would never say I'm a racist person. I would never say like I don't value my brothers and sisters. Uh, but I would say like I do value comfort. Katie has done like she's been writing the majority of these prayers we've been saying together yeah. as a church. I'd love to hear like how that process has like kind of affected your heart. Often we just want to individualize everything. We just want to make uh, a Sunday service about me and God. And definitely there's a, a facet to that that's true. Um, but we're also gathered as a group and the Bible is written to groups of people and to um, bodies of believers. And so we need to like own, as you've been saying, as uh, a mostly white church, like we have to talk about the complacency that we've been able to have, the compartmentalization we've been able to experience um, in our lives and repent. So this is an interesting kind of cultural moment because not only do we have this sort of dramatic experience that is uh, ver reverberating across the nation, um, but we also are in this season of COVID-19 where we are We've been at home for weeks and we've had this like universal pause in everything. But also these topics aren't new to our church, right? We've talked about reconciliation. We've talked about justice and mercy. So when you think about the church that we've been and the church that we want to be, and we think about this cultural moment, what do you, what is your prayer for us on the other side of this? Like, and what can you do as worship leaders to help us see that preferred future. I think it's interesting, um, speaking of uh, how COVID-19 and this, this whole pandemic situation leading up to where we are, it's it's almost like uh, the Lord was preparing people uh, to have uh, discussions about community, about yeah. being more more than themselves. Because, I mean, we were all, uh, we were all closing ourselves in for the sake of others. And so uh, it, it was almost as if, uh, as if the Lord knew uh, that <laughs> that that we needed to be softened. Yeah. Um, people's hearts needed to be softened to uh, the plight of those that are more vulnerable. Um, and so that going into where we are now, it's, it's it's almost as if God has opened ears that weren't willing to listen before. One of the lyrics in the song that Russ wrote was saying that. Uh, it's automatic to go back to um, yeah, what's easy. Yes. Um, yes. And so it's automatic for majority culture, middle class, white church uh, to, to go back to what was, what, what was easy. What right. was easy that you think now you're being challenged? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, to. yeah, I, I would say that it was, it's easy to, so it's one of the things that the Lord has shown me that um, in and having the privilege of a white person is to be able to ignore injustice. 
um, you can get overwhelmed by everything because God's starting to open your heart and your your empathy is growing and and I think a, a lot of people um, maybe it's just me but I think a lot of people would tend to say oh man this is too heavy this is too much I just need to hit pause um, and that's the privilege of people who are not being oppressed can do. They can pause. And I think that's something that the Lord's been convicting me of. I know that it's something that um, uh, maybe a lot of, uh, of people who look like me need to be pressed in. And so it's, it's easy for us to, uh, to do that, to, to step back into what's going on. Thank you guys for having this conversation. I think one of the cool things about it is that you are thinking about the unique role that God has called you to and the unique change that he is asking you to make to contribute to his call and his kingdom when it comes to justice. And honestly, that is the work that we all have to do, Journey Church, that's the work that, that you are called to do, is to ask yourself, what is God uniquely saying to me in this moment? Um, I encourage you to keep the conversation going uh, over lunch, at the dinner table, on your social distance walks. Like, the work is here. And when you do so in a body or people that you work with or that you're in community with, there's an opportunity for accountability. Yeah. There's an opportunity for you all to sharpen one another and for us to collectively be sharpened as a church. So I look forward to being together on Sunday and thank you all for being here. I just don't understand I don't why see people think our lives matter. This feels dangerous when it's taking us so long now just to get to the starting line to the starting line and what's been safe for us it's really been breaking us all along now such our hearts bring it all to light bring it all to light and when it feels like it costs too Would you teach us compassion and love? Oh, would you give us ears to hear? Give us eyes to see? Grant us grace and courage. Keep us on our knees. Would you make us quick to learn? Make us slow to speak? Let us grace and courage keep us on our knees Because the cross you gave is the cost you pay for us I know and we're so problematic It's almost automatic we don't want to be so uncomfortable, it's so unnatural, but I know we can't afford to ignore it so, melt our defenses, awaken all of our senses, so we can see what our brothers see, and so we can weep when our brothers weep, oh, when it feels like it just costs too much, oh, Teach us compassion and love. Yeah, would you give us ears to hear and give us eyes to see? Grant us grace and courage, keep us on our knees. Yeah, would you make us quick to learn and make us slow to speak? Grant us grace and courage, keep us on our knees. Oh, cause the cross you gave is the cost you pay for us. Yeah, I know we can do better. Oh, we can do better.
Oh, oh, oh. 